Welcome everybody to our Posca Paint party and we are going to do something so different tonight. Well, it still involves painting, but it's Halloween-y and we're going to be making masks. So it's a step away, you know, a step above beyond just painting because it's going to be something you can actually like do something really, really fun with on Halloween. Before we get started though, I want to thank our sponsors, yes. Posca. USA who allows us to give a box of paint pens away to a lucky winner every week. Last week's winner was Anne Pellegrino and we already got her address and they are shipping out actually tomorrow Anne and somebody will win today. And if you want to know who the winner is, if you want to know if it was you, make sure you follow Brophy Art Academy on Instagram and that's just at Brophy Art Academy and uh, let's see there's one more thing oh you know for those people who don't know who we are I'm Maria Brophy this is Drew Brophy we are your hosts and as we go along this next hour we want to invite you to ask questions and if you want to share what you're working on raise your hand or mention it in the chat and let us know where you're coming from too. Yeah, like um, where you are in the world because we get people from all over the world here. Yeah. And it's really fun to see. So, all right. Um, all right, I'm gonna run into my control room and I, you know, I love to be in control of everything. Yeah. And all right. uh, take it away, Drew. All right, so folks, uh, if you guys are like me, I grew up uh, making my own Halloween costumes and I really do believe that it is like part of the fun, you know, like going out and celebrating one, but actually doing the creative stuff like carving the pumpkin and making your Halloween costume or decorating your place is almost like more fun than the actual night itself. And I feel like that for all the holidays, including birthdays and things like make your own birthday cards and uh, do that kind of things. That's what I grew up doing. I never bought things at the store. Um, Oh, is this, Maria just posted, uh, this is kind of what we're doing today. And I like to show this because, um, you know, we got invited to a Halloween party uh, years ago. We were out of town and we had nothing to wear or no costumes. And I literally made this in about an hour before we went to this thing and just whipped it up out of what I could find. And that's kind of what I'm gonna show you today is something really simple and something that can be expanded upon. So it could be as simple as this, or it could be more complicated than this. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to do this and how I did it. And um, uh, anybody can make this. It can be a skull, it could be a pumpkin, it could be a smiley face, it could be whatever. But the Posca pens are just a great tool to uh, make any type of uh, holiday project or school project and it works on all kinds of different materials and the blending and all this kind of stuff. So um, if we can go back. So I have this like little uh, piece of paper right here. And this is kind of a, a little template of what we're going to be doing. I cut this little eye out. And, you know, what we want to do is have this thing kind of fit across your face like this. And then have it go around. So then you can see the skull side of it here. So this is a wrap. And then we can cut this out and make all these kind of uh, forms and shapes, kind of like I did that. And so literally we're creating a painting that you can wear. And um, what's great about it is this is something you can do fairly quickly and have a lot of fun with and, uh, and then be able to wear it. So that's what we're doing today. And um, hopefully you saw that we had uh, some supplies that you might need, which was a piece of cardboard um, some scissors, maybe a piece of string, um, a straight edge, uh, your Poscas, of course, and a good imagination. Um, also wanted to share that my finished piece from last week, uh, which is kind of cool. I was really happy that we uh, were able to do this one. And hopefully some of you share yours that you did uh, last week as well. And then real quick, I'm gonna show this is kind of what we're gonna be working on next week is like a silhouette drawing and with the cool orange sky. So that's next week. Um, but this week we're going to be doing this. So with 
with this, what, all I did with this was uh, take this sheet of paper. We can do it as a sh sheet of paper or as a template to lay down on your cardboard. My cardboard's right here. And this kind of gives you a mirror image. That way um, you can get it perfect. Um, so you can see that I kind of have a little sketch on here. Um, and this little piece of paper is going to be your tool. All right, so if you have a piece of paper um, and you can listen and, uh, and then do your project later as I go through this, um, or you can work along with me, um, you want to take your piece of paper and you want to fold it in half. So I just have one here that's just folded in, in half. And you want to be able to get to where your eye sockets are. And so if you hold it up to your face, and uh, if you can go back to the other camera and try to pinch where your eyes are, then you kind of want to see there and you have just a little gap for your eyes. And, you know, you start with that. That's where all this idea goes off the eyes. And it's very similar if any of you had done the tiki um, face uh, exercise that I'd done to show you how to draw tikis. This is very sim similar because basically we're going to be drawing kind of a face um, on, on your um, piece of paper. Now, if this was a pumpkin, uh, we could do like a jack-o'-lantern face. And keep in mind, it's going to be distorted because it's going to wrap around. And just like this, kind of looks kind of funky, but when you wrap it around, it looks good. Okay. And is that, that's just regular paper that you have. This is just regular I know paper. somebody's going to ask that question. Yeah. Okay. And so when you have this regular paper, it gives you your center point, which is the half. And then you want to kind of do your drawing from there. So this would be the way that you kind of get bef uh, your template before you put it on your cardboard. And you want to make sure that you kind of... Um, go a little bigger. As you can see with this, this one, let's go back to here, honey. Switch cameras. Actually, the cardboard's going to go higher and lower. Now, you could make this as big as or as small as you wanted. It could just be like an eye one, one for your eyes and, and above, and your mouth is, is hanging off. So there's no incorrect way to do this. It's just, re it's just the idea of being able to wrap it around your face, almost like a little crown or something. And it's real easy to take on and off. Uh, for those of you that like to do paper mache, that's a whole nother level to it that we could add. And actually um, I've made ones where they actually protrude out and things like that. So there's a lot of fun uh, that you can do with this. Um, but for now, let's just stick with this template and let's go to the overhead. And so I have this, this little sketch and once I have the eyes, the rest of it really doesn't matter. Um, you just want to be able to see through it. If you decide you want to put air holes in it, you can, and then just kind of black them out. But, you know, I have like this, like kind of skull looking thing going. And then from, I'm just going to do this real fast. And you want it to be able to, to wrap. And with the Poscas, I will black that out how I did with this. So that'll just kind of fade away. And then the art will go on. So if this was a pumpkin, you'd want it to kind of be rounded and you'd have, have that whole pumpkin shape around. And then when it wrapped around, you'd have this, this pumpkin shape. Um, it, it could be a witch face. It could be, you know, pretty much anything you want. It could be like Frankenstein's uh, face, uh, any of these things. But with this template, you would basically want to get this thing going. And then you'd want to cut this out. And then when you cut it out, now this is, this is just a quick concept just to show you. This isn't the final thing. But let's say you took your time and you drew this really nice thing and then you cut it out really nice. And this was just to get it symmetrical. Now you could draw this, um, but this is a, a, a much easier way to do it. So I'm just kind of making a rough shape just to get show you the idea. And there again, folks, this is um, just showing you the technique in which I've created these things. 
you can go as in depth or as simple as you would want, uh, depending on uh, what you're creating. So now I, I created this thing, and then all of a sudden I'm like, boom. It's, it shows that I can create a symmetrical thing and I would cut out the eyes and all this. So everybody understand this, this concept of making a template um, out of a piece of paper. You could use a much bigger piece of paper um, than that. But now here's the next step. This is all before you paint, just to give you an idea. Of, so you get the size and everything done. Before you go to the next step, I just want to uh, invite anyone that has a question on this first step, please just write it in the chat. Yeah. Um, I, I, I knew this was a bit ambitious to do on a paint party, um, but I, I still wanted to do it because I think just with these ideas, it's going to give everybody else some other ideas and uh, some things that maybe you've already done and could add to that. And all this is just about um, inspiring and then helping each other come up with great ideas for Halloween or, or really any uh, holiday or, or art activity. Um, now, I want to talk about the cardboard for a minute and why I like to use cardboard. Um, number one, it's, it's ready, readily available. Everybody has a cardboard box laying around. Um, but also, it's, it's rigid and it's paintable. And, um, you know, you, you won't freak out if you mess up and have to start over. Uh, for me, uh, I just kind of didn't have a whole lot to work with, with, this, with a, as a kid. And so I was always just playing with cardboard and, and carving it up. Uh, one thing to know, we want to make sure that you get a center line on your cardboard and you want a piece that's big enough so that it, it fits the shape of your head. Um, now you could use a, uh, a ruler or a tape measure to measure your face to make sure you have a big enough piece. I always say go a little bit higher and lower so that it hangs off your chin and hangs off a little bit above your head. Um, and I'd already done this already here. You know, I had like, I think it was, uh, sorry, I'm measuring my face right now. You know, it was about nine inches. And then I went about, you know, 10, 11, 12, about, about two, two inches or more above and below. And, and I can still cut this out. So imagine if I create this thing and I paint it, when I go to cut it out, I'll cut it out big. If I don't like it or it looks too big, I can trim it. And um, that's the concept I came up with. The main thing you want is use a piece of string works best. And if Maria's at the uh, controls, is she there yet? She can, yeah. So what you want to do is take this string and kind of measure right around your brow right here and kind of like right above the thick part of your head right here, because this is going to give you how much cardboard you actually need. And then you take that and then you measure from there. And so I got roughly, let's see. And there again, you wanna go about an inch or two more. So this was about 24 inches to go all the way around. Man, I got a big head. Uh, some of you might have little pea heads. Some of you have, might have big heads. So your uh, cardboard's gonna be, need to be at least that long and um, give you something to work with. The other thing is, is these cardboard is ribbed. You want to make sure that when you do the center line, you want it to be able to fold around your face. So you want to get these, the, the ribs going vertical so that it folds. Otherwise, it's not going to fold. Um, if you, uh, everybody knows what, uh, how cardboard has the ribs in it, you want them vertical. You don't want them horizontal, they'll fold the other way and it'll be hard to fold it around. All right, so hopefully all that makes sense. And I already got something started here to show you um, how I do this. And I used my little template. I put it down. It made me get a rough idea of where everything was. And I had a center line on the cardboard. I lined up the fold mark like that. And then that gave me a, um, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, symmetrical, but you want it, you know, kind of symmetrical, unless you were making a funny face where one eye was kind of closed and one eye was open, you could do that as well. Um, I'm just trying to give you the best instruction of, of how to do this. 
All right, so I have my mark here, over here. This is like giving me another inch so I can fold this thing around and staple it and wear it like a little crown. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna draw with the Posca pen so that everybody can see. I need my glasses. There we go. And you can see I roughly sketched this out and I already did the, the hard measuring work. And um, a real important thing is with your template is kind of measuring your eyes. Um, let me get a quick measurement on this. Um, you know, your eyes are actually pretty close together. You know, they're only like an, an inch or an inch and a half away from each other. And so you want the, these eye sockets to line up pretty good with your eyes. Um, you could always trim it more. I would say cut less um, when we go to cut this and then be able to cut more if you can't see, if that makes sense. Always cut a little less and then you can always cut more. So I'm going to be drawing a skull and I have a very definite way of drawing these skulls. I kind of have these like fun, like folding things. And from this point, this is just a painting. And when I do this, I have fun painting it and, you know, just kind of let the creativity roll out of me. And then I cut it out and then all of a sudden it's a wearable mask. It's a wearable painting. And so everybody can kind of see my skull in here. And I'm gonna make mine hang off my face pretty, pretty well. Like I got these sharp teeth too. And these things are gonna be cut out. So they're gonna be hanging out, out off, the, off my chin. And this is like so exciting, especially when I started doing this with my kids. And you know, some people go out and just buy a costume and get it over with. But this activity, just like the paint parties, just something about being creative and then having the, the, uh, the proud moment of, of wearing something you created and people go, wow, that's cool. And you say, yeah, I made that. How's that looking? All right. Pretty scary. You're going to scare the kids. So, go I'm gonna, so what's going to be neat is, you know, where I'm going to work on this today. And just like, you know, all my other projects, you know, I'll have it um, photographed on uh, Instagram and stuff. And then um, it'll be my Halloween costume. So... All right, I'm just gonna work on half of mine because I'm actually gonna get it to fold that way. So I'm gonna paint this half. I'm actually then, then gonna fold the cardboard. I want this kind of to wrap around like that. All right, can you see that? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this half and then I'm gonna fold my piece of cardboard and get it perfect. All right, now I'm gonna to go to paint. I'm gonna do mine in grays because I want it to look like a skull. And so I got my, my black, my gray, my white. And so those of you that were in the black and gray class, uh, all of a sudden see, yeah, this comes in handy. Now the cardboard doesn't take the pens um, blending as well. So if you would want to coat your um, cardboard, it would make the pens uh, blend a lot more. I uh, didn't do this process. I just kind of going to go for it and it works just as well. And so first thing I'm going to do is black out all the areas that I want kind of black. So like if you were doing a, um, let's say a jack-o-lantern mask, you want to probably black out the uh, the eyes and things in the mouth, anywhere you wanted it blacked out. I'll mark my 
baseball. And so this uh, piece of cardboard is actually folded underneath here so that I'll have enough on the other side to do this. Um, I'm gonna cut the nose or draw the nose in here where the nose would be on the skull. And then I'm gonna outline this place here. Everybody see my skull coming together? And I might add a little brown to this, gray and brown. So just like when I'm painting normal, I, uh, I'm gonna try to, to blend all these colors in. And this is a great time for questions. Uh, Maria, if you can get any questions in the chat. Um, well, it was, I, I don't think we have any yet, but let's see. Not yet. And I just want to let everybody know, for those of you who are new, we put the replays of all of these paint parties on YouTube under the Brophy Art Academy channel. And I'm going to put a link to it in the chat. And um, if you don't have a question, why don't you write in the chat what kind of mask you're working on? Like, is it a skull mask? Is it a pumpkin? A witch? What is it? Let us know. Yeah, Frankenstein would be good. Or Oh my gosh, that would be killer. Even something like, uh, you know, superheroes like Batman and stuff um, could be really cool done this way. It just, you know, just a more creative way to do it than maybe a store-bought one. But like I was saying is, you know, you could take this exercise um, many steps further and maybe use a more pliable, like, uh, material like a plastic or something that might uh, really allow you to um, get creative and also like there again paper mache so if you did this process and got it designed and then added uh, stuff onto it would be really cool and so but what I really also want people to get is this is just essentially a painting at this point, just like we do in all the paint parties. And what's neat about it is it's just a painting that can fold over your face. Okay, so Evan the artist is doing a demon mask. All right, Evan. To see that, you're going to have to show us when you get a little further along. Cinnamon is doing a pumpkin and her mom is doing a bat. Oh, that'll be great. Yeah, and then Rocco is doing Predator. Wow, that's, amb that's ambitious. That's, that's going to be really cool. And Callie Brooke is doing Jack Skeleton Mask. Oh, yeah. So I'm kind of like really kind of like doing my my blending and really trying to make this uh, blend together. Now you could use solid colors, like if you could do in the Jack Skeleton um, from, what, what's the name of the, what the night before, what, what is the name of the movie? Nightmare. Oh, He's Nightmare, yeah. Nightmare. But if you're doing him, you know, you could do it more flat colors where it doesn't have to be necessarily um, all blended together which that could work really good. And that could be a nice, quick, easy, nice mask to make. And even like if you're doing a bat like Cinnamon's mom, you could maybe just do that across your eyes and not have to do a whole face. Especially if you're at a cocktail party where you're wanting to sip on something. Oh yeah, that's a good suggestion. You want to um, snack on that candy that you're getting. Yeah. Um, John Schwanton is doing a chicken. Can't a chicken? Wait. Wow, I gotta see that. <laughs> yeah. Mine might end up looking like the predator. He's kind of... Well, that's what, uh, let's see, Rocco just wrote that in the chat. He did? <laughs> <laughs> um... But it's just really fun to, you know, sit around especially you know i really miss that my son's gotten older and you know we don't do these things that much anymore we used to have so much fun for like a week making our halloween costumes 
And um, I'm just so glad that I showed him how to do it. And so just like my, the paintings, these are kind of like the under colors. And this can, um, I'm not trying to get it super perfect. And I'll come back and get the detail uh, later. Jocelyn is doing a vampire dog. Ooh, that'd be good. So a va like a vampire dog is a really good example like of if you got creative with your cardboard, you could actually make it have a nose. So, you know, I'm sticking to the real simple version of, you know, just a, a flat wraparound mask. Whereas, you know, you could, you could get really elaborate with uh, cardboard, uh, just depending on how ambitious you are. And um, I've been very ambitious in the past, um, but it's just nice to be able in a pinch, like in that quick mask I did uh, years ago, that you could do this pretty quickly and come out with something that's pretty unique and uh, a lot more fun. Marcos joining our party from the Bridge Brewery. Oh, right. From a brewery. I like it. Are you painting there, Rocco? Or are you just watching? <laughs> I found them on Instagram, by the way. I looked up Bridge Brewery on Instagram. Found right. it. I'm going to share it in the chat. So I'm doing my teeth. So you do the first half and then you do the second half. Yeah, just so I can copy it. And, and also just for speed, I, I kind of want to get everybody you know, work in and showing that this doesn't have to be a laborious process. I just love how the Poscas will, you know, paint on almost anything and allow you to, um, you know, cover a lot of area and get the blends in there. This almost looks like a, it's going to end up looking like a helmet or something. I could have made this look like brain back here. Maybe I'll do that. Come back there and add it. All right, let me just get this edge like this. I should have some scary music playing in the background. I just thought of that. Let's see what I can do about that. Oops. Scary music. The other thing about cardboard is it, it's pretty sturdy. So, you know, if you imagine at your party and you're taking this on and off, you know, a lot of the costumes that I've made in the past, they, um, they totally survived the night and, um, And it could ultimately be used again if you wanted to. Uh, and this might seem like a silly question, but I know somebody's going to ask this eventually. What kind of, where did you get that cardboard? Like, is that just a regular cardboard box? Yeah, this was just a shipping box here in our studio. Um, I could have used a box that came, you know, something got shipped to me in and just, you know, opened it up. Um, I just had a flat one laying around, so I just decided to use that. That was easier. Um, but pretty much any, any piece of cardboard will work. You know, there's different, um, like, thicknesses of cardboard. So... You know, you don't want too thick of a piece because it won't fold that well. And you don't want too thin of a piece because it'll be um, uh, difficult to work with. Uh-oh. 
uh, something going on there. But you can see, I'm, mine's just going around. I'm, I'm going to cut mine out here in a second. Um, and I'm going to fold it. And I'm going to kind of show you guys how to do that. That's why I'm kind of zipping through mine. Don't feel like you have to keep up with me. Um, you see how I have these teeth that are going to hang off? I'm going to go ahead and put black around them like this. And I'm going to come back and detail this whole thing. And I'm actually going to put black around this part too. And that's where I'm going to cut to make it look nicer. Because the black you won't really see. And then I won't have these teeth won't be like these hang, hanging off so much. It'll be more of a shape. You see that? So I'm going to go ahead and do that here too. It's amazing what that thick black line does like instantly in a second. Yeah. I mean, it's okay, so I did that pretty fast, you guys. Now, I should probably wait for it to dry, but I'm going to just go for it because time is important. So I just have a normal uh, razor blade. You could probably use like a razor knife or a pair of scissors. Um, I'm just used to using a razor blade. Uh, I'm going to start just cutting around this line. And whatever you're cutting, a lot of times you might want to put another piece of cardboard under it, or you could cut on a piece of wood. Don't do this on your cut kitchen table with a razor blade because you will cut the, uh, the table and your mother will get mad at you or your father. Or your um, wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're using scissors, you know, that works too. I'm kind of going to just kind of go fast. I could be more gentle with this and make it like all perfect, but due to time constraints, I'm just kind of going for it so I can show you guys. And I really, I really want to, you know, do it in front of you so that you can see that it's doable. You know, sometimes you, you watch something on YouTube or something, they do it so fast and, or they just tell you how to do it and then they, they flash to it being done. You're just like, hey, wait a minute, how'd they do that? And I want to, I feel like I need to say this, we have a few young people on here. If you're a young person, say under the age of 15, please have your parents help you with the razor blades. Well, they can use scissors. Use scissors, just, you know, get help where your parents would want to help you. Yeah. I just, you know, feel like I need to say that. And everybody getting hurt and then me feel bad about it. But this is art, arts and crafts at its best, you know, when you're able to create stuff and um, it's always good, like if you're using a razor blade, also to cut away from you. Don't cut towards you. Like don't pull like this towards you. You always, that's why I spun this to cut away. I mean, I can feel those ribs in there really hard to cut through. This is some strong cardboard. I wonder if this would work with like a super sturdy paper, like maybe like a hundred pound heavyweight paper. It I'm would. Um, it just probably wouldn't survive the night as well as cardboard. And the ribs really help it to keep its integrity vertically. And um, that's, a, that's a real necessity because, you know, when you're wearing this thing, you know, you'll have friends like slap you in the head and things like that. And, you know, your poor mask might just rip in half if it was paper. But cardboard can take it. And actually these uh, types of masks uh, get better as you wear them because they kind of mold your face and they kind of get, they settle into a more of a, an easier position. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna share in a couple minutes. Drew, let me know when you're ready. We're at, uh, 25 minutes to the hour. Okay, and how about like five minutes? Okay.
So I know Kelly wants to share, and if anybody else wants to share, either hit the raise hand button or write it, type it in the chat. Um, Jocelyn wants to share also. Okay, so we'll we'll let y'all know when we're ready in just a couple minutes. Yeah. So I'm just going to complete like half of mine so that everybody can see it. All right, that's looking good. All right, I need to get rid of some of this excess cardboard. So I got a big box. So this is gonna go here. Okay, get rid of that piece. So now you can see like this, like this. And what we want to do is fold this. So this is the same thing as your template. So I'm going to fold this and you can see maybe on the side. Let's see. Um, you go back to the overhead. You see those uh, ribs in the cardboard that they're vertical. And that's going to make it so I can just fold this pretty easily. A good way to do that is also uh, using your straight edge. Move that into the view. So yeah, it's, to do with the straight edge. There we go. You know, you could put your straight edge down, and uh, and that'll help it fold right on that pleat. You see that plastic's not as strong as cardboard. There it goes. All right. Look at that. This looks so cool. It's amazing you did that with a shipping box. Yeah. So then. This is where it gets real easy. So I just trace it like this. Right? And there's that. I'm gonna put this piece of cardboard back down so I can cut this out real quick. And we're gonna see my mask come together. And I hadn't even done the detail yet. And folks, that's what, what I really like. I'm cutting this excess off. Give me some. Let's see how the scissors work so you guys can see. Scissors might actually work pretty good too. Well, scissors actually are working better. It's a little hard to get in these little angles and stuff. So whatever you have, it should work. And you could always just kind of like cut chunks too to get some of this excess off. Um, but if I can do most of this mask in an hour while I'm talking, trying to show you how to do it, I'm sure everybody here can create something amazing in a few hours. Um, I'm gonna go back to this. my razor blade is kind of dull too so a sharper razor blade so terry couch is on here hi terry good to see you and i you just posted in there your instagram handle which i already went on there and just followed you i i don't even know why i wasn't following you already um and Terry, do you want to share? If you do, mention that in the chat. Right now, I only have two people. Want to see what everybody's doing. Evan what said- Is Dubs on here? I'd uh, love to see what I Dubs doing. Dubs is here today. Your mom is on with us, but I think she's just watching. Say hi to mom. Hey, mom. I asked, <laughs> I asked Dubs if he was going to be on today, but he said he was going to be working. Oh, I had to work today. Yeah, I, I, so he, he did a live, and, and I was watching his live and, and uh, following what he was doing, and I asked him, hey, you're going to be on uh, the paint party today, and he's like, no, man, I can't. So, the, well, we missed him. Check him for us. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to cut my eye out right here. Okay. And... And so you can imagine, you know, I'm kind of blazing through this. The more 
care and time you, you do on this, the better job you can do. Uh, but even going fast, you can do something amazing. All right. So I got this going. So what I want to do now, let's flip to the front camera, honey. Okay. I wanted to ask Evan. Evan typed in the chat that he has to restart. Evan, do you want to show us what you did and, and maybe we can find out why you think you need to restart? And it might help other people. Yeah, let me just show them this real quick and then we'll go to Evan. Okay, all right. So you, you can see how the ribs in this allow this thing to really fold around your face and then it'll, it'll go and come around like this, like a crown. So go back to the front camera. Unbelievable. So you wanna keep messing with it. I need a couple more folds in here and to get it to fold right. But then once you have it sized, it'll go all the way around. And then this will just staple or Velcro. You could put Velcro on here and then it goes all the way around. I like to get it a little bit more flat so I want to kind of get this bent really good. And you can see how, why paper wouldn't be as good of an idea as this pleated cardboard with the ribs in it. So if I can get this piece, go back to the other camera. That looks pretty awesome. Yeah. And so I'm going to keep going on the detail on this while we go and see what other people are doing and, and help them out. Let's, but let's from here, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, from here, we can get this totally symmetrical. Um, I can do all the detail and I can have as much fun as possible making this thing amazing. And from here, it's just a painting, right? It's just a painting that you can actually wear. And you can see these dark areas kind of fade away and, and it'll look three dimensional on your face, especially like uh, you can, you know, add some stuff to the top. You could add things coming out of it. Like if it was the predator, you could get pieces of cardboard to come off this and go back um, or fabric or plants. Plants are really good using different kinds of plants and um, old, just like you could be taping like pieces of fabric up here that could drape off of this thing. So there's just lots that you can do from this point. This gives you the base of your mask and you can put as much effort or energy into it as you want. All right, so let's go to some people and um, see what everybody's having problems with and um, hopefully see some cool looking ideas. Okay, so we're gonna go to Evan first, then we'll go to Callie and then Jocelyn and then- All right. Okay. All right, Evan, if you could unmute yourself and here we come. What's There's up? Evan. What's up, brother? So what you got going? Oh, that's actually looking cool. Yeah. I don't know why we can't hear you. It looks like you're unmuted, but Can you you can hear me, Evan? Yeah. So it looks like your, your mask is good. You just need the, the things to strap. You see that? So that's kind of what you're missing. That the, one, the ones on the side, they can go around your back, but you really need something like thick, like a belt almost, you know? And you can add that still. You could still make just like a looped belt and then attach it to either side so it fits around. It's looking good. See if you can find out what's going on with your sound and, uh, and tag us back to talk to you. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Evan. I like Evan with his headphones. The headphones could be part of it. You know, you could do some cool headphones or a wig. You imagine like a cool wig with this on it? It'd just be like crazy. All right, who else are we going to go to? Kelly next. Kelly, if you could unmute yourself and then and we'll spotlight you. Here we go. 
I've been working on these two things. Oh, yeah. This is what I did last week. Oh, yeah, you did a good job from last week. That's a lot of pumpkins. Yeah, amazing. and your hearts are amazing, too. So you're going to try doing the mask project? I heard this was mine. Oh, wow. That is great. I still need to cut it down. Yeah, that's a, that is so good. That is really good. So my suggestion would be... This is what my dad is doing. Oh, look at that. That is so cool. What's up? You guys are, you guys are going to have some cool masks. You know, I was going to give you a suggestion. Make sure that your, the, your ends are really thick enough to hold, hold it on so it doesn't rip off. All right. God, wasn't that great, everybody? Thank Just, you. Yeah. So who else are we going to go to? Okay, now we're going to go to Jocelyn next. Jocelyn. Um, takes me a second to get over there. All right, spotlighting you right now. Hi. Hey, how Jocelyn. Are you? Oh, you're doing a dog mask. That is good. That's so fun. Yeah. So you just cut it out nice and careful, and then you can wrap it around your face and uh, have a cool mask for Halloween. Did you cut the eyes out already? No. Not no, yet? Not yet. Can't wait to see what that looks like. Yeah, e even the, the, mat, the, the poster on your wall would make a great mask. I know. Yeah, the one right behind you. <laughs> yeah. I love that poster. That's cool. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. God, that was a good one. The dog was great. I know. What's the name of that dog? I, re I remember that dog from a cartoon. I think it's like Blue's Clues dog. Is that God, what it is? That's a good memory. All right, let's see what somebody else is making. Right, now we're going to go to Terry. Terry is one of our art collectors. Terry, if you could unmute yourself. What's up? How's it going, guys? Good. Are you doing Frankie behind you? No, I, you know, I thought of it. I should have sort of doing it. You can come in here. Say hi. Yeah. Hey, what's up? You got, you got your iguana? That's a, that's a bearded dragon. That's cool. No, I was, looking at, I was looking at Frankie over here with, you know, and uh, I was like, oh, you know, I should have done that. But no, I, I'm having a hard time with the, with the, the popping out. Yeah. I, the, the problem that I see is your eyes are way too far apart. You're not going to be able to see through it. Yeah. Um, yeah, are totally. You, <laughs> but but, you could, but it, it could still work. You could just make like um, some eye holes that aren't the actual eyes. They're like some kind of... Okay. And then, and then so then your those big skeleton eyes are like on either side of your head. Yeah. You could do that too. Or you could make the eye... The, the black of the eyes bigger going all the way, you know, over. Cause yeah, because they're your eyes are only about an inch apart or, or so, just they're not very far apart. Okay, so but I think that looks great, that's amazing. I love the teeth, and when it wraps around, <laughs> you know, kind of like I did on mine where I, do, I put black underneath, just make that a shape so that those teeth don't get like bent and stuff. Oh, got it. Okay, yeah. But yeah. I think it's it's really cool. I'm just uh, trying to learn the, the 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 detail part from you. Yeah, and that's where I'm at right now. I'm gonna detail mine, and it's gonna look really cool. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Good seeing you guys again. Good to see you. Likewise, this is great. In person. Right on. Happy Halloween. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks to you. Yeah. Oh man, that's cool. Are yeah, so that, you know, his mask is really neat, but he just has to get his eyes so that, you know, you can see like in the, like when you look at me right now, my, my eyes, like the cavity, my eyes are really close together. So you want the fold and then you want to be able to have your eyes right there, wherever that is. So that's why I started at the eyes and that's the most important thing. You want to be able to see through it. And some of you, like I learned real quick, the last time I did this, I cut out the nose too. And then you could just put black on your nose and so you can breathe a little better. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, we have one more person that wants to share, Cinnamon. And we have like nine minutes left. So Cinnamon, if you're ready, if you could unmute yourself and now we're gonna spotlight you. Hey, Hi. Cinnamon. Hi. 
Um, let's, see, you? let's see yours. So I've started with two masks. I've got this cat demon thing that I yeah get, and I'm also halfway through on making a pumpkin. D oh, oh, the pumpkin's so good. Awesome. And my mum. All of that. Let's and see what mom's doing. yeah, my mum is making a bat. Oh, mask. look at her! Oh, yeah, she's got the face of a bat. Mom's hiding over there behind her mask. <laughs> so you girls yeah. having having fun over there? Yeah. Yeah. Hell of a so fun. It's it, mask making's fun too. Yeah. So. And cinnamon, you know what you could do with yours if you want to keep that pumpkin shape. Uh, kind of like what I said with Evan is you could make the loop kind of go around and then just have it attach up here so you can keep that pumpkin maybe round instead of a wrap. So you could do ah. that too. That's a good idea. Yeah, so, you know, really, I, I was just hoping to inspire everybody to, to play with these ideas. And I know so many of you are creative that you'll find new ways to do things. And, you know, you can cut this cardboard and pleat it and paper mache things onto it. I mean, you could have horns coming out of it. You could have all kinds of things. And, um, you know, the sky's the limit. And you can see that just sitting and messing with this and, getting it to the point where it's like this wearable piece, then you can just decorate it and make it as cool as you want. So once you get these fundamentals down to, to how it kind of wraps around your face and, and how it attaches, the rest is just being creative and decorating it. Um, and that's why I was really happy and, and anxious to kind of show everybody this simple process because uh, anybody can do it. And all of you that are creative could do it really well. So I'm just going to keep detailing mine. And um, do we have any other questions or anything, honey? No, we we don't. It seems like everybody's at working. Like I like scrolling through and looking at what people are doing. Um, those who have their video on, because you just see people are just really into what they're making. Yeah. Which, which is the whole reason we do these Posca paint parties. It really is. And, um, you know, I didn't get Posca pens until I was like 18, 19 years old. And so I can't imagine like what I could have created as a boy with all these things. And, um, and as a family also, you know, being able to do cool things. So Poscas make it possible a lot easier than, than having to have like brushes and well, yeah this is this is just a lot more user friendly and so I keep going back and forth and doing detail making my teeth a little sh sharper he kind of is looking like the predator John wants to share. John, I'm going to unmute you and spotlight you if you're ready right now. Hi. Hey, hey man. Good to see you. How are yeah. you guys? Let's it's see what you're cool. working on, man. Um, well, I, I do every year I do the polar plunge for Special Olympics. And last year they had a, a, a t shirt they were selling for people that were too scared. And it was a too chicken to plunge shirt. <laughs> That's great. So I went ahead and I'm going to be that chicken this year. Oh, look at you. Okay, you win. If we had a mask contest, you won right now. That is <laughs> amazing. It was oh fun. Oh my gosh, that's so much fun. Yeah, John, that's, I mean, isn't it amazing how just a simple piece of cardboard, how it folds mm. around your face? No, it absolutely. I, I, uh, when, when I was in college, I had this ridiculous chicken mask that I used to wear around. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scare my wife with this one. Right on. So were you one of those people that made everything as a kid too? Oh yeah, absolutely. No, I my, my mom had a big uh, 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 Charlie Brown great pumpkin thing on the porch for trick-or-treating. Yeah. Um, hope, hope, hope next week I can do something like that. Yeah. Well, right on. Thanks for uh, sh showing us because yours, yours is amazing. That's, that's exactly, you know, just I think oh, everybody's is going to look that good by the time they get finished. Yeah. And, and, and the eyes even fit. Yeah. 
Now, I know you're on Instagram. Will you make sure you tag Brook the Art Academy when you post a picture of that? Oh, absolutely. We can repost it because I'd love to share that with our audience. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank Welcome you. Here. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Well, wow, you know, this, I was a little bit worried about, you know, doing something this ambitious. Um, you know, all you guys are doing such a great job. And, you know, I, I just, I just love creative people, you know, as a group, I think we, we all need to, you know, step out of the box a little bit more and step, step out into the public a little bit more and show people how to do these things. Because I, I really feel like they're missing out on, on a simple, fun thing. Um, stick to things that are real, like creating art or playing music versus just listening to music, um, you know, cooking food, you know, all these things that are uh, the activity of doing it in, in itself is so gratifying. And, um, you know, so as artists, let's uh, push others to do this and uh, share it with them. And uh, it, was a, it was a great uh, paint party. And I'll get mine done. Everybody get theirs done and post it. Post it on Instagram yeah. and tag Brophy Art Academy. I hope you all had fun. This was. Let's see Maria in it. Uh, I'm going to steal this. I'm totally stealing it. Gosh. That's yeah. Pretty good. Wait till the other side's done. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Yeah, for thank you all. And then uh, don't forget, next week, we're going to be doing this uh, cool Halloween painting. A Halloween sunset. This is yeah. my idea because I love, I love these Halloween sunsets. They're so cool. Yeah. And I want Drew to paint like a witch floating through the sky there. Yeah. I kind of did mine as that. like a, a nightmare on Waikiki Beach or something. Yeah. But we'll be doing so this next week. We'll so. see you all next week. And remember, go to YouTube, find our channel, Brophy Art Academy, and hit subscribe so you never miss our replays. Thanks, yeah. you all. Bye, everybody. Bye.